Hi, Cynthia Allen here. I'd like to break open the ideas around how the Feldenkrais Method helps in reducing chronic pain. It really starts or centers around three fields of study. Learning theory, neuroplasticity, and human development. Now these three fields are really deeply intertwined, although I'm sure each of them has their own unique things to offer. But I want to start with those and let's give a little mini anatomy lesson in a way. At the center of our functioning is our nervous system. Our nervous system consists of our brain, our spinal cord, nerves, and sense organs such as our eyes and ears. Now the central nervous system has a really important role and that is to keep you alive. It's what it's thinking about all the time, 24-7. When you're born, as a baby, you begin the process of learning how to function. You learn how to do your respiration, how to do your heartbeat, how to do your digestion, how to do your metabolism, how to take food in, chew it, swallow it. You learn how to make sense of images. The nervous system is continually scanning for how can it become better at doing this thing called life in such a way that it creates higher levels of safety. Because the nervous system is so interested in keeping us alive, it needs pain and fear to be front and center. That sounds bizarre, doesn't it? Because we all want to have happy babies and we look for happy lives. But the thing that our nervous system is most interested in is, can I survive in this moment? And so it tends to give priority to the emotions of fear and pain. Now, I call those emotions, we could call them as sensations. Sensations are assigned by your brain. All sensations are really, as far as we know, assigned by the brain. That's kind of the new understanding. Neuroplasticity is also a relatively new understanding and that in the last 20-30 years we now understand that we don't just come into this world as children to learn but that through our entire adult lives we're able of learning. Neuroplasticity is this capacity of your brain to change in shape and function, to change in, in structure and function. So. It turns out that whatever we do more of, we get better at, right? We kind of know that. And it is also true as it relates to movement and chronic pain. So let's take a little bit closer look at that. Most chronic pain situations begin with some kind of trauma, some kind of scare. It could be that some kind of actual tissue damage was done. It could be that the event had nothing that you could have done to control it at all, right? You could have been in an auto accident, you might have stepped off of a curb funny. Or it could be that you reached down into the refrigerator, picked up a heavy bowl, turned, twisted, and suddenly your back was in spasm or you had a severe shooting pain and you knew something was really, really wrong. Any of these kinds of situations usually will clear up, but if the trauma is significant enough or if there is repetitive uh, instigations to say, no, that's another injury, oh, and that's another moment to be uh, concerned about, oh, there's more and more happening here, this is where we end up with an opportunity to develop chronic pain problems. This is where your brain actually gets better at producing more chronic pain. And these are actually become erroneous messages because you can only do so much damage to yourself, to be honest. You will probably be irritating the tissue, but it's not likely you're continuing to cause permanent damage to yourself with every single moment that you reach over to pick up something. So we need to address the issue of how can we help the brain learn to do something other than to produce chronic pain. Now this is not to say that there isn't movement patterns that need to change. In fact, I think that it's important to recognize that there are a number of things that we want to change in the nervous system. And those are best related to, I think, by looking at neuroplasticity and MAPS. 
Researchers have studied what parts of the brain does what. It helps them to understand when there's a brain trauma or injury, what's going on, and actually it's helped them to understand the situation around chronic pain. There are a number of maps, but three that I want to talk about are the pain map, the sensory map, and the motor maps. Now, the sensory motor maps are really closely related in the brain, closely situated together and interplay a lot, but really so does the pain map. And so I think it's possible that we can change all three of these maps with the Feldenkrais method. Now, let's just talk about why these maps would be so important. You can't actually do much of them with them yourself. Mostly those maps only make sense to a neurosurgeon or a neurologist. But for your perspective, what you can be interested in is how could I make these a more accurate map and why would they be inaccurate in the first place? Well, first of all, your maps are built according to how you use yourself. I've sort of hinted at that or said that before. For example, if you are a musician, your sensory motor maps around hearing and around your hands will be quite different than if you're an Olympic runner. If you're left-handed or right-handed, your maps will be different. So how we use ourselves makes a difference. Now actually, it turns out that with people who were studied who have chronic back pain, their sensory map, their image of where their spine is, is wrong. They actually don't have a sense of where their spine is. It's not accurate. Well, you might think, so big deal, they don't know where their spine is, their spine is maybe an inch off of where they think it is. Well, it is a really big deal. You can imagine that if you thought that your right hand was always an inch or two inches off to the right, you didn't really know where it was at in space, that throughout the day, you're going to have a lot of disappointing interactions with your own mouth, shaking someone else's hand, trying to reach for a glass. All kinds of things are not going to go well. So having the ability to perceive your parts of yourself accurately and how they relate to each other, how they work together, move together, this is a very big deal. But this leads me to be able to talk about how is it that the Feldenkrais method actually helps reduce chronic pain. And here are the key ways that I think it helps. Number one turning the quality of your movement from the kind of movement that produces wear and tear to movement that produces wear and repair. Now, you probably know in order to have healthy muscle or healthy bone, you have to have a little bit of stress. The stress actually instigates the system to come in and grow stronger. But if you have movement that just grinds away on a specific joint or ligament or muscle, you will, in fact, end up with an injury pattern. And something long-term, it might look like osteoarthritis, very common, say, with back pain or neck problems. So we want to have quality movements that improve how the system forms, reshapes itself, heals, instead of tears it down. Having movements that does this will be deeply felt within your system and you'll start to build an inner confidence. Your nervous system will begin to build an inner confidence that you can be trusted in your movement patterns. It doesn't need to send out these continual messages of, whoa, watch out, there it comes. Oh my gosh, gonna do something stupid again. Instead, it has a kind of sense of, ah, that's nice, yeah. I'm actually stronger than I thought I was. Oh, I was able to reach over and pick that up without any difficulty whatsoever. Number two, more accurate sensory and motor maps. The Feldenkrais Method is exquisite in helping you feel, sense, and learn about the parts of yourself and how they can work together in movements, in something as basic as walking and reaching, but you can go anywhere with it actually. So I recently read a couple of great articles by guys interested in parkour, you know, where they jump uh, fences and buildings and really some high level items and they're talking about how the Feldenkrais method is helping them. So yes, it helps with chronic pain situations, but really it helps with anybody who's just wanting to learn to move, sense, and feel better in their lives. I mean, I don't know anybody who actually doesn't want to do that. 
Uh, but what motivates a lot of people to come to the Feldenkrais Method is, in fact, some kind of pain or injury. So as you learn about yourself in these unique novel ways that the Feldenkrais Method provides, in very slow, gentle, easy movements, which does not trigger the nervous system to say, danger, danger, danger. Instead it says, ah, yeah, I got that. That's interesting. That's interesting and I know it's safe. Therefore, I can really pay attention to that and I'm going to learn a little more about that. So your sensory and motor maps begin to really start to flesh out in an increasingly more accurate way. Number three, decrease the activation of the pain maps. Because we move slowly, we coach a lot of variations on, on the theme, we attend or coach you to attend to your breathing. The pain map, uh, the part of the brain that says, I have to be on the alert to constantly to produce pain, doesn't get triggered quite as often. And not only does it not get triggered quite as often, but something else starts to get triggered. Other areas of the sensory system, like ease, comfort, curiosity, joy, all start to be able to come into play. They start to balance out that hyperactive chronic pain pattern that's been going on. And you know what I'm talking about. You get up in the morning and the first thing you say to yourself is, how much pain do I have? Am I in pain? I don't know if I'm, am I going to be able to make it through the day? And that's how you go through the entire day, is constantly measuring that area for yourself that typically has pain and wondering if it's going to get worse, stay like this, whatever. I mean, it can be just nonstop for people who have chronic pain. So anytime we can interrupt that with contrasting sensations of ease or pleasure or something interesting, something to pay attention to, it's a good thing. Number four, awareness. The Feldenkrais Method is fabulous for helping you to grow and become aware of yourself. Not aware of yourself in space, aware of how you do things, aware of how you think about yourself, how you see yourself, and what are the messages that you give yourself around your body, your uh, being in the world, and around pain. As you get more awareness, you then have options to consciously decide to do differently. I hope you enjoyed this little talk on how the Feldenkrais Method can help with chronic pain. Please do check me out. My online services are at futurelifenow-online.com. Or if you happen to be in the Cincinnati area, you can come and see me personally. You can also do private sessions with me online. And you can find out about other practitioners at feldenkrais.com. We'd love to help you get out of that chronic pain and get back to living an expansive life and doing what you were meant to be doing.